Hello, and welcome to Covert Castaway. I'm Holly. Je suis Stéphane. Join us as we share what we learn and how we're making the transition to live aboard cruising. All right. Well, we have a super cool podcast planned for you guys today. Um, we are sitting with our boat buddies, and um, they're from Blue Saga, Fu and Bella. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to do buddy boating. We've been with them for about four weeks now. Is that right, Stefan? A little more. A full month. Yeah. So, um, hey, guys. So, so excited we're doing this. <laughs> um, Want to just give us a feel for where we're at right now and what's going on around us? Well, you guys have the best anchorage in the whole bay here. We're in Exos, uh, right at the base of the fortress. Uh, they have a grotto in the back of their boat. It's a long line to shore. Uh, beautiful turquoise waters. Uh, typical, like, and beautiful Mediterranean uh, landscapes and, 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 and you know, flowers and plants and trees. And it's amazing. Essos is a pretty cool town, too. They're, the color just pops with where, whatever angle you look at it. And it has cute little restaurants that we ate at last night. And the setting is unbeatable. Yeah, so let's talk a, lot, a, a little bit about what you're hearing in the background. So there's, uh, we have a new mic set up, and so we're excited about it. We have two mics now. But we also are stern tied with these, what do you call them? Mm, straps. Straps, yeah. And they're kind of flapping in the wind, so you're going to hear what sounds like a little bit like a UFO. Would you guys say that's the right sound? <laughs> yeah, sounds right. <laughs> um, and then also in the background, we have uh, the cicadas. So the bugs, the crickets, or whatever they are. What are they in France, Stefan? <laughs> Seagull. Seagull. <laughs> yeah, whatever they are. Um, and they're kind of loud, screaming at us. So you'll hear that a little bit in the they're background. They're not screaming, they're singing. Oh, they're singing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. So Music is summertime, it's cool, everything is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, what do you guys think of this buddy boating thing? Have you done this before? Or doing this with us, was that kind of, I mean, four weeks is a long time. Ooh. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been amazing. We haven't done it before. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. This is our first time, and it's been a, been a, like makes like the whole journey much, I think, easier. The much, much journey much much easier. Like, and you have a lot more friends. We have friends around, uh, so it's been great. Yeah, I think it's it's. We didn't really plan it that way. It's just like, oh, let's meet up, and then before you know it, we just hang out and let's go here, let's go there. So it is, uh, it is a lot more fun with the uh, buddy boating, I think. Yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot from you guys, just kind of watching what you do and how you uh, approach things. I think that's been a huge benefit for me is just seeing how you, you've been kind of cruising a little bit longer than we have and traveling a little bit longer. And so you're more in the like mode of... Good. <laughs> no Only routine. tiny bit longer, <laughs> not that much longer. Slow, yeah. Easy. yeah, like I'm learning how to relax a little bit more. <laughs> really, that's really the only thing. Oh, man. And that was a lot of well, teaching that, there. That you can learn from everyone pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's all good. But um, so let's talk about, you know, the logistics first of, of the buddy boat situation. Because it's not as easy as just like taking one boat to one location. Because finding anchorages and places to go are, are sort of hard enough. Mm. So let's talk about the logistics part. And then we can talk a little bit more about, um, you know, how, how to what dynamic kind of makes it work, right? So from from a logistics standpoint, um, Stefan, you want to just talk a little bit about, we come in, we normally come in first, and we're kind of scoping out an area looking for not only one place to put a boat, but two. Do you have any comments or insights on, on what that's been like? Yeah, I thought initially that would be, that would be one of the issues of buddy body. that suddenly, like, you're trying to stay together, but you're looking for anchorages and you might be like far away from each other for whatever reason. But or one boat can find a spot and the other boat can't. Yeah. yeah. And and so far, maybe because we're still early in the season, um, so it's early July and we've been mostly cruising together the month of June. So maybe we've been lucky for that. And also maybe the, there's still maybe an impact from COVID-19, maybe less people. So, so far we've 
haven't had any issues. We've been pretty much side by side in every anchorages, crossing or stern lines. Um, so from that point of view, it worked out pretty well. But that could be an issue um, if you if you buddy boat with more than one boat, <laughs> or if you're buddy boating into like the peak of the the season. That might that might become a little tricky. What we do also is we tend to leave early the days we move. Uh, so, well, early. <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 11, noon. <laughs> but the goal being that depending how far we're, we're going, but we're trying to um, just hop from islands to islands. We, uh, we have, and the longest passage, quote unquote, hasn't been, you know, maybe like 30 nautical miles. I mean, there's a lot of islands to go to. So the, the, the passages are pretty, pretty short, a few hours. Um, and we try to get there like you know, early afternoon, so it's easier to you know to, for anchoring. That's usually when people leaving by noon. So we get there. There's more spots, and we see people typically arriving like later in the afternoon. So it's a you know if you do those little things that helps also to uh, find spots. Yeah. So far we've been pretty lucky. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I actually think the, the timing that we use, the wake up in the morning fairly early uh, and then getting to the next anchorage pretty early helps a lot with a transitional period where there's a lot more spots and so we can get together. But actually, it's kind of interesting because you actually mentioned how you guys come in and scope out places for two boats. I actually never thought about that when we were buddy boating. I just thought, well, I think we're all on our own trying to do things and if we can help the other boat, that's kind of sort of the mentality to be in because I think it'll be challenging in some spots to be like we all have to be right next to each other we're not like a you know big flotilla yacht week or something where they reserve big spots together but I, we've been absolutely lucky where we can find spots for each other or help each other into spots which has been amazing mm-hmm. yeah totally lucky i feel like um as stefan said and the helping each other part's useful you know because um you know, you, Vu, you've been kind of jumping in with the paddle board and helping us out. And Stefan, you've been kind of jumping in. You know, that, that's been super helpful. Yeah, whoever is kind of ready first or got there first. And, you know, that's, that's great because suddenly you get another pair of hands. And, you know, so, I mean, and to explain the logistics to people when doing stern ties, I mean, you drop your anchor, ideally you put your bridle, you get the lines to shore on the paddle board, you have somebody on the boat, the other one in the water. So if you already have somebody uh, on a center paddle board <laughs> and you don't, you can keep two people on the boat, um, that makes it a lot easier. So so it's, it's great for this extra pair of hands. Um, uh, and also, just to talk about the weather, the next location, um, I mean, I guess that's part of also the, the logistics. You know, you, you have like different sources of information. You, you, know, you look at, um, you know, the, the weather information, the forecast, you get something in your head. You're looking at possible anchorages. You're looking at, you know, the, the, the charts. And, you know, it's like you two people exchanging information, but now you have like four people doing research, exchanging information, confirming what you saw, or maybe like saying, oh, I saw something, I didn't notice that. So it just reassures you like when when you're going somewhere that, you know, you have had four pairs of eyes looking at things and you're like, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, we're feeling pretty good uh, where we're going, the weather forecast and stuff like this. So that's just a sense of like... Uh, uh, confidence that everybody has looked at uh, all the angles. Yeah, it sure makes you feel better. I remember we'd be cruising alone and we'd show up somewhere and, we, and there'd be no other boats and we'd be like, what the heck? Like, what do these guys, what do people know that we don't know? Like, is there some weather, weather system coming in? What do you guys think? Uh, just a little bit of the logistics part because just knowing that, for example, our boat only has 75 meters of chain and you guys have 100 and you guys always tell us, oh, that spot is shallower, so that you guys will let us have the shallower spot and you guys take the deeper spot. Just little things like that help out each other and look at. And when there are two boats in a small bay, pretty much no one else comes in. Then you kind of, it's also nice too that we have a yeah. little private haven there. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened a couple times where we found these little tiny inlets. And the one we just left was super cute. And um, yeah, that was, that was really cool. So anything about the weather or route planning or destination planning you guys want to comment on with four people? Well, I think it's uh, it's interesting. I think the, there's a double-edged sword to that. I think the first one is absolutely like you get reinforced like the, 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 the weather, you reinforce the locations, you can discover the best locations potentially when there's four people. 
Um, and we have been fortunate because I think we're all of like minds, but I can imagine a scenario where someone has different thoughts of how they'd like to you know, sail, where they'd like to go, what they'd like to see. That could be a challenge. You can have four opinions and you have to <laughs> rationalize. Like, what do you mean? Like, give an example of what's worked here that maybe wouldn't work in a different situation. Oh, I, well, I think oh. because we are, we're so like-minded about stuff or like how far we want to cruise, where we want to see and what we want to do, it's been super easy and super, that's what makes it, I think, this last month's go by so quickly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you can imagine someone who wants to just go go to big cities all the time spend all their time on shore and they don't they want to be at the key where we like be more you know we're away from the key a little bit more natural you know it's, it's peaceful <clears throat> and you can imagine if we were the opposite of that you guys are probably like oh my god <laughs> what are we going to do <laughs> how do we find a way to, to break up the... <laughs> exactly <laughs> but i think the key word is being flexible yeah and true. we're being flexible about yeah. the schedule the locations yeah, because in the big picture it's all paradise <laughs> <laughs> around so it's like oh what about this anchorage oh sure no problem you know we'll go there and if we don't like it the next yeah. day we leave if we like it we'll stay five days and you yeah. know yeah i mean that's uh vu brings up a good point like you know if there was one group i, I think if you're trying to figure out if you're going to buddy boat with someone i think you have to ask the question like what what are you looking to get out of it? Like, mm. do you want to visit these big places and mm. do do these kinds yeah. of things, or do you want to like mellow out and just chill experience, at an anchorage? Experience the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, think. I, I think buddy boating has like a few different components. Like the first one component is probably the people you, you assume you want to hang out with those people. That's why you buddy boat. Mm. I think the second part is like the logistics and helping hand type of thing, which we really appreciate. Uh, and then uh, I think the third is maybe experiencing something that maybe four people or six people can do better together, mm -hmm. like uh, where you can't potentially do that by yourself as a single boat. But I think those are the major components why you potentially would buddy boat, you know. Um, but yeah, so I think for us, it's worked out really well. I think mm -hmm. in all those elements, we love hanging out with you guys. We've been helping each other coming into anchorages and solving the slums. And we, we like doing the same things like hiking or seeing the island, like exploring restaurants, little shops and do all those things together. And it's, it's great. You know? Yeah, and and I, I gotta say, like being with you guys is really fun too, because you want to hike and do stuff. Sometimes a little bit more more aggressively than <laughs> we would normally do, <laughs> or or I don't know, spirited. I guess is a better word, which is awesome because. You know, after we get done with these like 12 mile hikes uphill, um, we actually go, well, that was really fun. We saw some cool stuff where maybe if we're alone on the boat, we would opt to just like not do that yeah. you know so i think that's been really fun yeah you, you encourage each other and yeah you, you're like you mm -hmm. know it's just it's just kind of like a sporting activity you know if you have a buddy to go run like you know so one day you might be like oh i'm good to stay on the boat it's hot and somebody suggests well let's go for a hike and then you're like oh okay why not <laughs> and then you're going and you're like oh yeah it's, it was awesome and you know so it's i think it's just the the benefits of of like encouraging each other to do more things so it's super great from a social point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're doing a lot of social stuff, and then you're like, oh, I haven't done any boat projects lately. <laughs> because every day we're busy, like, you know, going in the water and exploring this, exploring that. And, and then you're like, oh, okay, the boat project list. I mean, luckily we've done lots of stuff before that, but that would be a good advice. Before buddy boating, <laughs> get your boat in order <laughs> because it's it's uh, it's good fun, and then uh, it's at the expense of like you know doing things that maybe you will want to you have to do on your boat. I definitely think it's made us like focus more on the having fun part because yeah. um, I think we would we would be like oh we have to do this or that, and so I, I think that's been really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you guys think about like the other stuff like the aspects of? eating meals, cooking, you know, you want to kind of just describe what we've been doing and how we've been kind of dealing with that or not dealing think, with that in this case. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, for us, it's been a perfect balance return between, uh, you know, meals on our boat, meal, meals in town and meals with you, like, or with you guys, you know, and enjoying uh, meals together on the boats and each of our boats. And so that's kind of been an interesting difference, I guess, like if we were by ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, I think for us, we have uh, our, we generally go to town more often than you guys. So that may be like a little bit of a difference. You mean eating out? Eating out, yeah. eating out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and we like exploring restaurants all the time and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we, we, I think, do that a lot more than you guys generally would like to do that. But I think it's been a good balance for us. And I think you guys are giving a little bit, like being flexible about that. But that's been, been great to be able to explore and do things. Yeah, I think I think the the key word has is still being easygoing and mm -hmm. flexible. 
because what's what's another meal? You know, it, yeah. it really doesn't matter to me where we eat what? and what we. And I I love to explore, and a, a good meal is great. But then it's is I think it's I enjoy being uh, with people. I enjoy having fun, yeah, and that's, that's more sure. important to yeah. us. And I think we go through phases, like maybe in the bigger towns, like where we stay in Corfu and Preveza naturally you're going to go and eat out but after a while i think even if as much as you enjoy eating out yeah. after you, a while like, like i feel we're all like oh we're kind of tired of like greek food <laughs> for a while we need a break so it's like oh how about pizza and stuff and then after that you're like well kind of like tired of like eating out and want a little mm-hmm. kind of you know yeah. a little um, detox yeah. maybe yeah. from the yeah. eating out but yeah. one more zucchini ball yeah, but. just say. <laughs> More zucchini balls for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> except the the fresh juice and stuff. This uh, doesn't yeah. get old. Oh, yeah. if, <laughs> if you kind of find a little stand and walk in the morning, and then you know have a little fresh juice, it's like uh, it's nice. But yeah. Magic, yeah. But we've had a really good balance of like cities. Um, we did Corfu, Preveza, um, and then these little tiny towns. I think that's been helpful too. How would you describe? you know, how we're picking our destinations together? I don't know. I think uh, generally we just kind of go with the flow and mm-hmm. see what's, you know, at the p- yeah. at a moment, what seems like for us as a group, it seems what's, you know, appealing, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. we all talk about it. I think we share we share places and we talk about where we should go, how far we should go. And, and so, so it's kind of exploring. So exploring doesn't mean you always know where you're going next. You just kind of just discover as you go. Because yeah. this town, ASOS, I think some, some people told us about it, but we didn't know anything about it because we've, we sail in and it's like fortress on the you know rock cliffs and little cute little you know fishing village. It's amazing. It's amazing. Beautiful turquoise waters. It's like so yeah, you just don't know. We didn't know anything about this town really before we got here and here we are. And then we're gonna probably spend a few days here even, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's like the power of social media when you know you're not looking for that location and, and somebody mentioned something. We had this about like um, uh, what was it? Lastovo, the town next Lastovo, to like yeah, yeah, yeah. to uh, to uh, Meteorite when we went to visit, like somebody you know mentioned that yeah. to two people. We ended up stopping by and we we're like, oh, this is super cute. And, like, and same thing, you had friends mentioning this place, and we arrived here, and it's just like amazing. And just by looking at the regular things you look at, you know, in Navili, you might miss some places like that. And um, so, yeah, anytime you can get like. Uh, People from social media recommending places they've been to, I think that will be like, oh, let's let's investigate that. Oh. And that's a different mindset, right? Like it's different than going, okay, well, we're gonna for the next four weeks we're gonna do this, that, and the other thing. Um, we haven't been doing that. We've it, it's sort of like mm-hmm. we kind of go, okay, we're gonna do the Ionians. That's like as Absolutely. as far as our plan yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then every day we're we're enjoying where we're at. And we don't actually even talk about where we're going until literally like the, the sometimes the morning <laughs> of or the yeah. night before. Well, we're like, we feel, all feel ready to move. We yeah. decide then to like pick a de- destination. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or we've had also, I think like days we were like, oh, let's move tomorrow. And at the end of the day, after a long hike and coming <laughs> back that night and everybody's like, well, maybe uh, it might be good to spend another day and chill. <laughs> we can always move the day after that. And so, yeah, just been uh, super flexible. Yeah, that's been really nice. So what's going to cause the breakup? I mean, is it the plans? <laughs> is it the time? You know, we're going to kind of go this way. You're going to go yeah. that way. I think I think that would, that would be the answer, which is I mm-hmm. think you guys are getting to Turkey. You have a contract in Turkey for the for the winter. We have a contract in Montenegro for the winter. Mm-hmm. At that point, we'll have to separate and tears will start flowing I and all know. that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but uh, but that would probably be the reason, the reason why. Because it's been, I think, a great like little journey together. And it's been a lot of fun for us, yeah. you know, personally. Yeah. No, that that's. That will that will do it for us because well we we only intended to cruise the Ionian mm-hmm. and you guys really probably stay in Ionians longer than you plan I I don't know but it's it's been great and I I don't think it's ending just yet <laughs> no. <laughs> no. so we still look no forward you have to a few more weeks of, of us uh, <laughs> yeah so it, it's it's true I mean we probably wouldn't have stayed here this long but. I would say that we've also gotten people sending us notes saying, I wish I would have stayed in the Ionians longer because mm-hmm. they actually enjoyed it better than some of the other more mainstream. When you think of Greek mm-hmm. um, islands, you know, some of those islands. Um, so we may have to kind of go a little bit more quickly through some of those places. And Well, I guess the 
so we need to end up in, in, the, in the coast of Turkey and the boat will leave it in Finnick in the southern coast. But um, so our, our overall plan is to, um, to cross the Asian Sea and then end up in the northern part of Turkey and sail down slowly so we get there like November-ish. Um, so where we'll skip a little bit is the Peloponnese. Uh, typically, you will cross like the current channel, and then you will save time. So this year it's closed, so we'll go around. So we'll see. Maybe we'll discover some nice places and stay a little longer. But right now the idea is like, okay, we'll probably uh, shorten that route. Like, I mean, well, shorten it. <laughs> we'll, we'll do. A, <laughs> if we have to go around it. There is no no shorten that that. But we might just make it a passage of you know an overnight or, or something like this. And then to spend more time in the Asian islands, and and so we'll we'll, um, we'll see as we go. But we know also the boat is going to be in Turkey, and we'll whenever we decide to head west, we'll probably spend more time in Greece. So, yeah, exactly. So, any other parting thoughts on um, buddy boating, or any things you've observed or learned, or? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, like I think I mentioned earlier, like, it's been a really a great uh, pleasure to be able to sail with the, the you know, team Alwyn and on, on you guys and with you guys. And uh, I think our experience here in, in the Ionians for the last, you know, since month and some is uh, it's been absolutely amazing because of that. And so, yeah, we, we really kind of I think we would recommend buddy boating, taking that kind of journey with someone you really like to hang out with and spend more time with, and just kind of discover their lives as well. Because I think we also learned a lot more about you guys in the last month, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, so uh, it's not only about discovering new places, it's also about discovering people, and Buddy Blooding helps you out with that, I think. Yeah, I mean, and this is what why we do it right. Like, we want to explore places, but we also want to meet cool people. Yeah, so that's been that's been really fun. So where can people find you online? Uh, we have a website called the, thebluesaga.com, and you can read about a little bit our blog that's pretty out of date. Uh, <laughs> on, uh, We're so busy having fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We put everything in social media off uh, for our sailing and having fun. That's how it's kind of our philosophy. Uh, but uh, yeah. So that's you can find more information about us. And then on Instagram, it's uh, uh, you know, uh, at, Vu, at Vu360. And for Isabella, it's at uh, Chilabella and uh, Instagram. Yeah, cool. And we did a podcast with them. Uh, earlier, I think it was late last season in Montenegro. Um, it's called Conversation with Boo and Bella. You can check that out too. So that's it for now. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, like, or share with another covert castaway. Fair winds for now. Bye-bye.